Hello everyone and you're all very warm welcome to this tutorial for the PMDG Boeing 737 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a member of the PMDG tech team and a real life Boeing 737 pilot. Note that this tutorial is recorded using a pre-release beta version of the airplane, so not everything you see might be finalized already and there might be some small issues every here and then. Nonetheless, I hope you're going to enjoy this one. So, in today's tutorial we are going to cover some of the data link features associated with the flight management computer of the PMDG 737. I should say that data link in this in terms of this tutorial does not mean that you can actually communicate with the outside world but due to current limitations in Microsoft Flight Simulator at the time of this recording in April 2022 it is not possible for PMDG to access some of the uh, websites or services like Simbrief. However, there are a couple ways to get around this, some of which I'm going to show you today. So once we are ready to start our FMC preparation, we're going to click on FMC check all the data in here we're in the 737-700 it got a 24k engine rating and the IRAC is active from March 24th till April 21st I'm recording this on 25th so currently it's out of date and the airplane is showing me the same and that is something you should check before you depart your flight if you have an active uh, Navigraph or Aerosoft subscription to update the data if you don't have that not that much of a problem either but you if you are flying online, you should cross-check the procedures from the FMC with the current charts. Next, we're heading for the performance init page. We go on next page, copy the GPS left data, insert it here in the set IRS position prompt. Now we're heading off to root, and this is where things are getting interesting. If you just press on the flight plan request button like I do now, then it's going to show you a list of all the flight plan files you have available in the applicable folder. For the exact path where those are stored you can have a look into the introduction document where this is explained and if you would choose one of those over there then it would simply uplink them now. However if you don't want to manually choose between the routes you can do the following. We're flying from London Stansted, Echo Golf Sierra Sierra And if you now click Flight Plan Request, it's going to filter it to show you only those flights departing London Stansted. If you want to make it even easier, then you now also enter the destination Dublin. And now you can click Flight Plan Request. And now it's going to look directly for any route between Stansted and Dublin, and it's going to uplink that. The third alternative how to do things is to simply insert the flight number. However, if you want to do that, be aware that Simbrief is not currently exporting the flight number as part of the route. Or rather, as part of the route file. Therefore, you would have to have a flight plan file where the flight number is actually included, which Simbrief is currently not providing. I hope that Simbrief is going to update that at some point of the future, because I believe it's easiest if you just insert the call sign, for example, Ryanair 7 Echo Golf over here, put it in here and then press request. Those are the different ways how you can request the flight plan. We're going to do it this way. Stansted to Dublin is in, then we click flight plan request. And it shows us that we have a route here. Again, flight number is empty because Simbrief is currently not providing the information. However, it shows it's showing us a flight plan from Echo Golf Sierra Sierra to Echo India Delta Whiskey. It's telling me the route is 291 miles. We can compare that with the distance in our flight plan. In here it says 330. And that's because of the standard instrument arrival in Dublin, which is pretty long. And you have to keep in mind that when you are uplinking the route, it is never going to include a SID or a STAR. Therefore, this is the correct route that we want to choose. We can cross-check it down here as well. And, well, this is telling me the route ID is stands to Dublin 01. Now Simbrief is currently exporting all the routes by using the ICAO codes, not the IATA codes. So actually Echo Golf Sierra Sierra Echo India Delta Whiskey is the correct name. 
So we are going to choose this route. Click on select. Now it's sending the request. Now we'll wait a little bit and let the computer do its thing. And here we are, root uplink ready. We click on load. Root uplink loading. And here we are. Root data uplink. Let's have a look onto the next page. There's our routing. We quickly compared to this one to make sure that we have actually selected the correct file. It's Utaba, Cabex 75 Buzzard. Tango 420 Trend, Apolima 28 Laldo, Mike 145 Baxo. So we click on Activate. As said, currently it's saying Direct Utava, and after Baxo it doesn't have any further routing, so we still have to insert the Departure and Arrival manually. So we go to Departure Arrival, select Departure, Rome 2 2 instanced it on the Utava 1 Romeo Departure. We go there again, Departure's Arrival, Dublin Arrivals. Next page, ILS 28 left, Baxo 2 Lima arrival. Go back to root, we insert our call sign, Romeo Yanko Romeo 7 Echo Golf. That's located on the flight plan up here. Put that in, and now we're basically fully, fully ready on the root page. We're going to execute this. If you are using the uplink features, you do want to execute the root once you've inserted it, contrary to the manual insertion procedure as described in my previous tutorial on the manual FMC preparation. Next we head on to the performance init, and here again we can simply request our performance init. I'm going to do this now, click on request. Now the system needs a bit of time, and while it does that I'm quickly going to show you how it's going to collect its data. Basically every livery got a file applicable to it, where some general information is saved. You can change this manual if you go to PMDG Setup, Aircraft, Equipment, press Next Page, and here you're on the data link initialization prompt. The company cost and ex specified to this livery, we're sitting in a Ryanair aircraft, is 6. For alternate, it wants to choose a minimum runway length of 5000 feet. Note this value here is always in feet, and not in meters. And then, do you want to have an ILS requirement for alternates? Yes, we do. And this is then what it's going to base this data on. Now we have our performance in an uplink. Click on load. And now you can see that it's basically prepared everything from the most optimal data. Note that this might be different from your Simbri flight plan, since the PMDG 737 is currently not able to communicate with Simbri due to limitations in the Microsoft Flight Simulator platform. Therefore, the data we're getting over here, cost an X6, then it's got 2.5 tons of reserve fuel. That's probably calculated for an alternate that's further away than what we've selected. We've chosen Belfast here. That's need about a, that needs about a ton of alternate fuel and a final reserve of uh, nine uh, 926 kilos, adding up to 1.9. Now, this has chosen something different, so Therefore, you see 2.5 here. The zero fuel weight is directly taken from the current payload of the airplane. So if you go on menu, FS actions, and payload, here you can see where it's getting its data from. Similarly, the cruise level is based on the um, optimum trip level and not on the Simri flight plan. I'm going to click execute and then it inserted this data. If you are using a Simbri flight plan, you still want to insert the average wind. However, we can use a small trick here. If we're in inserting the top of climb wind and not the actual one, so that's 89 knots at, uh, sorry, 89 degrees at 33 knots, and the temperature deviation at the top of climb, they say minus 56 degrees here. Our flight plan says minus 7, so that's going to be minus 63 degrees. And we also have to insert our transition altitude manually, which in the UK, as you can see on the departure chart here, 
This is Jepperson chart. All rights go out to Jepperson, of course, provided to the flight sim community by Navigraph. So we look here, transition altitude 6000, so we are going to insert 6001. For the explanation why you add that single sheet, I can very much recommend you to have a look at my other basic FMC setup tutorial where I've explained this. We continue on. We can go to the descent page. We're inserting a 250 knots below 10,000 restriction. Again, for the explanation, have a look at the other video. You go on the forecast page, and now here we don't need to type anything. We're simply going to request the winds, and the system is going to do it for us. Personally, I would also I would always insert flight level 310, flight level 200, and flight level 100 before because. This descent wind request is actually going to read the winds for the altitudes that you have specified in here. If you don't specify anything, you'll see it now. We click on load. Then it is going to take flight level 250, 15,000 and 6,000. For the transition level for Dublin, again, we'll put 70 in, as in the other tutorial. And the Q&H will take it from our flight plan once again. Here we go, Dublin, QNH 1014. And execute. One more thing we can do now is go on the LEX page, press on route data, you can request your en route winds as well. Now for a short flight like this, you only have two waypoints between your top of climb and top of descent, so we have some winds in here. But if we request this data, then we will be uh, able to get the actual wins there, giving us a little more accurate performance predictions in the flight. Press load. Execute. So this is what we have here now. And that is um, pretty much all we can do on this page. Finally, we head out to the fix page. Now I can very much re recommend the airfield briefings provided from Blackbox 711. They do offer engine out standard instrument departures for many airports. So over here we can see it in Stansted, runway 22, engine out standard instrument departure. It's taking us straight out to 20 miles and hold. So we are going to insert Echo Golf Sierra Sierra. And we'll put a 20 mile ring around that. So that in case we have an engine out scenario, we can simply proceed on the runway track to this very uh, ring then. Alright, that's it. There is not much more to do if you have used those uplinks. So you are now fully prepared for your flight. Once again, the data from those uplinks is not actually sourced from the internet, but it's sourced from files stored locally on your computer. And here's a small trick that I can very much recommend you to do. If you open your Simbrief downloader like this, and you click on the change settings button, then there is this box here, always export new flight plans automatically. And there is an important disclaimer here, and that's saying that it, is, it can very quickly fill up your disk space if you're computing a lot of fly plans and exporting them for a lot of add-ons. But that's what I've done here. I'm always exporting those things automatically. Then down here in the list, I've set up a PMDG fly plan and a PMDG wind uplink. And export those to the Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, directories. And that's how easily you can always get your SimRoof data ready for um, usage in the automated uplinks. Alright, that is it. I would like to thank you very much for watching this tutorial. And now we'll head out and start our flight deck preparations. And for that I'm going to start a new video. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you a great day.